Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the number one podcast in the entire universe. Not the Joe Rogan experience, not impulsive, not uh, your mom's house, not do you know, what are your what podcast do you like? I'm going to shout out my friends real quick. I like listening to Making Sense of Adulting, which you were on, which I was on, and that's how we met, and haven't been invited back to. But excellent point, ladies and gentlemen. Today, my guest is the first guest to be larger than me. Uh, in the wrong ways. In stature. <laughs> and it's hard not to be inappropriate. I'll say it. it and and girth. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, well, I'm not, it doesn't have to be like a phallic thing. No, just. Just like a, you can hold that a little closer too. Ge I'm new to this, if you can't tell. And just general girth. We don't have to get inappropriate about He's it. He's a thick boy. I'm thick. We're a couple of thick boys. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen. Can I say your full name? Sure. <laughs> Mr. Lewis Charles Waddle the Third. Absolutely. Very regal. Very he's, regal. He's recently had some fun with my middle name. I don't know if you feel like telling. Well, actually, that's one of the first things I want to talk about. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, one of the most interesting things that have happened to you recently. Yeah. Uh, you were involved in a bit of a, we'll call it a motorcycle uh, spill. Yeah, absolutely. An Would accident. you, for the viewers tell them what what transpired yeah well first off i feel obligated to say if you own a motorcycle invest in really good gear if i can't convince you to sell your motorcycle i've been i've been recently transformed into not a motorcycle fan i got a little bit of a little bit of a boo-boo um but i was on my way to get rid of the bike and went around a curve was driving with my co-worker he was tailing me on his bike and Took a spill, mm. took a spill, was going like 35, 40 around a curve and tumbled into the uh, into the shoulder. So from there, you're on your back, I assume, at the end of that? I am I am sliding like this. I've got my, I can't do this holding the microphone, one hand like this. On the my, ground? My other arm like this, sliding kind of on my belly side mm. thing. And then once I hit the shoulder, I kind of like tumble. I felt like I was tumbling for like 10 minutes. So when it's all over, when yeah. you're when you're laying still, yeah. what do you do? What's well, I'm I'm immediately back on my feet, but apparently I was I guess in some pain. Uh, so the adrenaline kind of had me black out like a time or two. Mm. The very nice lady stopped. She was a like an emergency nurse or something, which is a godsend. Lucky. I know yeah. first one to stop, and I was sitting in the back of her car. They're trying to get me to sit down, but I was about to yak, so I was trying to get away from her car. Mm. Apparently I was being a little unruly. They called the they called the ambulance on me. Mm. But yeah, your boy at that point had just started a new job, didn't have great insurance, so I was not <laughs> I was not about to like have the ambulance take me. So I called my two friends. They thought I was in a car wreck cuz I called them I was like I got in a little bit of an accident. Like, can you come pick me up? They were like looking for my truck. And when <laughs> when my buddy's girlfriend realized that I was on my motorcycle, she started freaking out. So that was fun. I'm fully recovered from that. I'm glad to get that chapter of my life over. Yeah. So why that ties in is because Caleb has recently met my mother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did. Well, can I just say, too, also, I'm looking over there because I have a chronic fear that it's not recording. And I don't have, like, a producer that knows anything about that. So, um, but no, I was, you texted me the evening of your little spill did i send you the pictures you sent me pictures and videos you had like an er nurse take a picture of you waving actually that was that was my friend junie oh junie yeah. was there junie was there for the record folks <laughs> i didn't get a call i am not your emergency contact i learned that that night which is fine i don't need that responsibility anyway. i'm sorry no. i'll call you next time i mean hopefully there's not a next time but yeah i hope there is just so i can get a call <laughs> So we'll wait, so something. real quick, are, are you, what led you to want to get a motorcycle in the first place? Oh man, Have you always wanted to be a, a biker? Yeah. Well, I kind of always wanted one, um, pretty much all the wrong reasons. So mm. we'll just leave it at that for chicks uh, to maybe. look cool. Oh yeah, definitely. I need help on that department sometimes. So I disagree. I, I mean, disagree. so <laughs> And you, you you don't think you'll ever ride again? Probably not. I think I think first off, 
my my dad would probably kill me. Mm. Like not that's not an idle threat. I think he'd probably kill me. Mm. Uh, I'd probably make my mom cry. Mm. So we're gonna we're gonna try to avoid that if at all possible. Speaking of your mother, yeah, your mother came down <laughs> after your little tumble, and I had the privilege of meeting her. You did, and this is when I learned <laughs> I met you as Louie. Yeah, I am Louie. Just he, he is Louie. <laughs> yeah. His preferred name is Louie, <laughs> but his mother. Calls him Charlie. As most of my family does as well. Because your dad is the called same, Louis. The same, it's just easier to work out that way. But now you are you self-identify as Louis again. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if I've told you the full story, right? Do you want to tell the whole yeah, world? Yeah, I'll tell our, the whole world. Our millions of viewers and so, listeners? Absolutely. Millions. We, this is not hyperbolic at all. We've got the biggest following. We're the only podcast to have a trillion views per episode. Biggest. Yes, yeah. whole world and Absolutely. most of dead people too. Suck it, Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, maybe you can piss off the world as much as Joe Rogan has, but that would be a challenge. That would be great. I love Joe Rogan, but you know he's definitely full of controversy. <laughs> so the story, the story is: I started new school in sixth grade, and I just never corrected anyone for my legal name. Mm. After like week one or week two, it was too late. You know, yeah, I had a I had a friend whose name is Caitlin, mm-hmm. but when, like I I met her as Katie, <laughs> and then like we went to like different something, yeah, or like she she didn't go to our high school, she like went did online school, I don't know, she did homeschool, yeah, something. She acted like a homeschool, and then kid. then came back and was Caitlin. Oh, Katie, Kate, that's not a stretch though. It was like... for me. It caused a lot of emotional damage. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pick I wonder, a name, dude. I wonder how you would have reacted when I went from Charlie to Louie. I would call you Charlie. That's okay. He's been very insistent. Um, I we've... told uh, <laughs> Louie, Louis Charlie and I go to the, the same gym, and I after your spill, I told everybody at the gym what had happened uh, because, you know, I thought you probably weren't going to be at the gym for a little bit. Um, they were wrong. No, he's back. He rose from the ashes like the mighty phoenix. I didn't do too well today, but it did happen. He was there. We yeah. got our sweat on. Yeah. Um. So anyway, I, t- I said, look, he he got into a bit of a little, a little trip, and he might be in recovery for like a, a few weeks or so, so he won't be in. And they very sweetly said, well, should we, you know, freeze his membership so you don't have to pay for all these unused weeks. I said, yeah, that'd probably be uh, probably be a really nice thing. If I wasn't so frivolous with my money, that'd that's probably true. Be a good idea. If it wasn't rich, you're rich. Then, <laughs> for us, us us broke folk would really appreciate something like that. But and that's pocket change for Mister Lewis Charles Waddle the Third. He's again being hyperbolic. You keep talking when you fancy words. You ain't impressing me. Um. So anyway, Mister Hyperball over here. Uh. <laughs> But but they I told them that you were Charlie and that you yeah. hated it and and so I've since then well there's another story and I maybe we need to segue away from talking about every single detail of my personal life in a second but they've been calling me Sweet Charlie the Third which who is, are they <laughs> so apparently so my name was settled on being Louis or Louis or some other variation of that until. The night before I was born, apparently, uh, my mom had watched Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the original one with Gene Wilder. Shout out. Shout out. Rip. Gene. Um, The goat. And so she said, I think she said the same thing to you. She's very consistent with this story. I just wanted him to be sweet like Charlie. And I I guess that's that's where it comes from. So sweet Charlie. It worked. It did. I, I wish I was as sweet as sweet Charlie. I definitely have no golden tickets. I think you're sitting by the guy who got the golden ticket oh. to Hollywood. Yeah, absolutely. You did. I'm going to hit that. So. <coughs> Subtle flex. Subtle flex. He's got a truck and a bike, but I got a golden ticket that well, I stole. You know bike. you're not supposed to take those? You're like, not supposed to take the golden They. It's like a prop? They have a limited amount of tickets. <laughs> like they don't print out one for everybody. So, so I don't know how many they have. Maybe. That's like that's like your diploma on on graduation day. Like yeah, that thing. Yeah. Like, like you, you don't get a real one. It's you sent get it later. You take a picture with it and go. Oh my god, I'm going to Hollywood. <laughs> and then they're, and like, then they're like, Yank. give it to us. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
That sucks. I mean, so but to <laughs> to finish that, I am not typically a rule breaker. I I like rules most of the time when they make sense. I, I don't know if I agree with that. I feel like you could be a little rebellious if you wanted to. I guess I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm not trying to ruin my image for the okay, moms. Listening. So yeah, the moms, you know, for the moms. But he's a sweet boy. He sells Bibles <laughs> in his spare time. Um, Hangs out at <laughs> in I, nursing homes and orphanages. Yeah, just absolutely. teaching the kids how to fish. Yep. Um, <laughs> I stole the ticket. Did you? Okay. I well. Do you they, still have it? They, yeah, it's hanging up in my bedroom at home. Um, they, Over the bed. Yeah. You look out like at it. Beside like, my first buck I killed. It's right beside there. Um, two of my proudest moments. That's pretty good. I'd be pretty proud too. Nine point. Nine, oh. Yeah. First buck? First buck, nine point. Small I I bodied, but I counted nine. Listen, Sp- that's, I, went you know, for I mean, my first was a doe, so yeah. you're doing better than me, I think. Yeah, as always. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Look, haven't 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 I'm ever ridden a motorcycle, but never had a motorcycle wreck. Yeah, well, I mean, you said that I have a truck and a bike. I have half a bike and a truck. So yeah, former former owner, former owner of a Harley, but we're not worried about the audio at all. It's no, not it's a still big deal. it's still going. It's still going. Look, I'm a, I don't have how you say uh, intellectual prowess. Okay, um, those are some big words too. I feel like you need to give yourself better, more credit. I is stupid. <laughs> me <And> dumb. <laughs> me just trying to figure out if that's <laughs> going or not. It's going. Um, yeah. Where was? I? Oh, the ticket. Yeah. So I had the ticket, and this like PA uh, in Savannah, Georgia, came up to me as like, "Hey, man, I need your ticket." And I was like, "Look, if I were to take this, yeah, if I put it up my shirt, mm-hmm. you're not gonna wrestle me for it." <laughs> is it like do do? Is this gonna like give you consequences? <laughs> and he's like, "I don't. I'm a local." He's like, I work here. I'm not going. This is as far as my job with them goes. Yeah. I don't get in trouble, my man. And so I dapped him up You're like, and slid understood. it up the shirt. What if Car- Katy Perry is like, like DMs you, like, give us the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Can I swear? Um, Probably not. We're not going to. I started to. I'm going to keep it clean for the moms. Sam, be aware. He said pho. I said pho. Which is a lovely it's, soup. It's a dish. Yeah. It's, it's a soup, yeah. Pho, yeah. I love like, a, like a ramen type thing? Kind of. I don't, I don't know exactly which type of Asian it is, but Isn't it's... Isn't it like Vietnamese? Yeah. Yeah. It, I've had it before. It's very delicious. I, I, I started ap- crying. It if it's so not spicy. Vietnamese, I apologize to whatever culture that it comes from. You're just going to get canceled. Speaking of cultures and cancellations, we are in a new uh, set today for the, uh, for the viewers yeah. because we're in a bit of a remodeling process. Mm. Transitional with, period. Yeah, transitional period with my my house and everything, and uh, it's everything's a mess, and I'm tired. So today, we just kind of hung up some stuff. We just did this. Louis did it, not a wee thing, honestly. Louis, I think you had some creative uh, insight some on it. Yeah, yeah you were like, that goes there. Sam had some input as well. Yeah, he did. But um, higher. For the record, I am. Without a doubt, one sixteenth Cherokee. <laughs> so I got this in a in like a pawn shop for like two bucks. So if this is like a, offensive, well, I'm not trying to be. I would have just ignored it and let it be the elephant in the room. You know. Look, man, I can. I, I think, think it's apparent that I'm not like I'm pretty white. Yeah. So I just want, but also that is the whitest looking native I've ever seen. That looks like that looks put, like Clint Eastwood. They put Clint Eastwood in a headdress. <laughs> that I mean, if anything, they can't get mad at you for appropriation. I let's, didn't paint it. Let's blame M. M. Caraselli. Caraselli. Uh, Caraselli. Yeah, that's Italian name. She's totally appropriate. Yeah, that's she. Oh, or he. You're assuming only know. girls paint them. That's yeah. Hey Sam, can we cut that? I'm not trying to get canceled. <laughs> anyway, so I'm here with local racist and sexist. <laughs> I also uh, hate puppies and hate st- babies. every time that we this is a true story. Yeah. And this is every time we're out in public and he sees a puppy, people <laughs> stop and they go, "Oh my god, so cute!" And L- Louis, you played some football back in the day. He punts the puppy, and if they're not if they're on a leash, it's like a helicopter motion, <laughs> it just goes around inertia as they're <laughs> swinging around, getting drugged down what to the that? floor. That's, we're new using another big one. It's a uh, centripetal force. Centripetal you know, force. Fucking, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I said a bad word. Hey Sam, you're gonna have to bleep me again. Centripetal? No, I, I said in. 
Yeah, that's okay. We'll cut that little part because that's a little racist. I like the puppy. Yeah, I mean, the puppy good one is good. We can keep that. We'll just chop it up. Guys, we had to make an edit. but We'll fix it in post. We had to make an edit, but Louis was just talking about how he kicks yeah. dogs. Yeah, I do. I punt them in centripetal force. He has a dog. We don't, Brody, we don't kick Brody. No, right? Brody's fantastic. Brody is everything that is good with the world. I felt bad for Brody when you were injured because you weren't very mobile mm. and you it looked like things kind of hurt when you touched them. Yeah, it definitely did, but I and just kind of made cuddle. it my I made it my neighbors. Oh, I definitely couldn't cuddle with him. That was I bad. felt bad for him. Yeah, that's he he was a little touch deprived for a few days, but unfortunately I did make it my neighbors problems mm. with like, you know, the potty time stuff and mm. I just kind of opened the front door and was like <laughs> he'll come back. Like He's I got, got a skin graft. <laughs> I, this I, I was a huge baby. I, would, I mean, I tried to be tough about it, and people would be like, "Are you hurting?" I'd be like, "No," but I think at the end of the day, I ended up being a big baby about it. So I think you handled yourself very, very well. Well, that's okay. So I'm one handled. Let's talk. <laughs> let's talk music. Okay. So I don't know if we've had this conversation. That's why I want to do it on camera. When you <laughs> met me, you hadn't heard of me, yeah? No, I had not. I so honestly, I. I don't think I looked you up until afterwards, mm. and honestly, I feel like I'd I'd gone and watched a few filmings of Making Sense of Adulting and listened to a couple of like pretty talented people, but Ca I mean Caleb just has this personality. It's not. It's I mean I'm gonna plug you real quick. More give us more. <laughs> yeah, it's not like just some act or like or like some front that's put up. Like he legitimately is just probably one of the easiest to talk to people very deep thinker analytical and was automatically drawn to it and it took us a little while to hang out afterwards global yeah i mean it was i mean it's kind of like a i mean there was a global phenomenon happening yeah i mean so that the pandemic us, yeah yeah i didn't know if we'd get but, flagged for that on youtube that's okay we'll figure it out listen to fauci probably i don't know yeah um, fauci's good we'll, yeah 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 we love don't him. demonetize huh? caleb please um, <laughs> but, um, I mean, I kind of forget the, the point of why I brought this up, but uh, you, so you saw me, and yeah. you were immediately in a platonic way attracted. To yeah. Me. No, I mean, you could even, I mean, I'm sure Junie and, and Rodney can attest to this, but like I would, I started listening to your music afterwards. I was like, this dude is so cool. I was like, I mean, the conversation that we had was really, really good. And yeah. I feel like we talked about, I mean, I'm a bigger guy as well. And I, on the podcast, we talked about some very relatable things and, and I feel like we just kind of had a lot in common. Yeah. Whenever as like a bigger person mm -hmm. and I'm sure if there's some bigger people listening, whether that whatever kind of big that is mm -hmm. horizontal, vertical, yeah. a mix of both. Um, when you see a fellow, a fellow large person, yeah, you're like, Hey, like let's yeah it's so they're either combative the combative we have the same shoe size I yeah <laughs> yeah i love having friends what size what, are you a 13 no 14? I'm, I'm i'm not that well endowed you have a you're you're not a big foot guy no I'm, i've got tiny hands i mean i got I tiny, have hands. tiny hands but i got i'm wearing some 13s I wear, I, yeah some i mean 14 shoes i i'm sure i could wear some 13s and end up with some blisters but i'm like I mean, I broke my foot and my ankle. I'm just accident prone, I guess. But I'm like 11 half on one side and a 12 on the other, which, I mean. Do you buy separate sizes? No, I just do a 12. Could you, do you think if you went to Boot Barn and said, look, I love this I boot, I give me an 11 and a half and a 12. <laughs> I mean, I should, but like, no, I'm not, I'm not that fussy about it. That'd be goofy, though. That'd be really goofy. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm just like a little goofy, and I know that one foot is just a little bit smaller than the other. Most people are like. I don't know. He's in a silly, goofy mood. I'm in a silly, goofy mood. But um, to, go ahead. So you're asking about your music. Is is that was the point of this? Not just to fish for compliments. Um, I mean, I'm always fishing. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I, I was just gonna say, I think we we hit it off pretty well. Yeah. Pretty pretty early on. Took us a while to, uh, regroup. But we've you, you went to the gym with me. Yeah. Probably what, like six, eight months ago or now? Yeah. And you went to a different gym yeah. and then you ended up like stealing my gym. So I had no choice but to start going with you to that one. Correct. Like, yeah. You kind of pigeonholed me into that one. Correct. I was happy to do it, but you know, we're fucking. Jeez. Fucking we're fucking around. Should I make a big noise whenever he cusses so you can see? Woo! <laughs> <in the> <laughs> 
that hurt. But that'll show up. Yeah, that'll show up. He'll be able to fix that in post. So you're a bad boy. I have I have a problem. Do you have a hard time not cussing in your professional life? No, I work in construction. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I usually keep it a little calm, and I usually am not drinking whiskey. Um, it's apple juice. Yeah, I mean, it's apple it's juice. It's apple juice, mama. No, that's apple juice that's making me cuss. So, <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I, I work uh, as a construction estimator, so I talk to some fancy people, but most of the time I'm talking to other people kind of mm. similar to me. Mm. Mm. very nice i like it a lot um so yeah so we hit it off best friends forever um and but you have, i was just gonna say one of the things that i uh liked about you fairly early was you have a, a good taste in music i would say i appreciate that i um why don't I don't you know. why don't you why don't you share with us uh where your music uh tastes come from and what you like and maybe yeah. shout out a few of your favorite artists other than yeah. me of course um no i i love caleb's stuff and and i mean i don't know are we allowed, hey, to, talk, are we allowed to talk about some upcoming stuff you or? can talk yeah I, I mean you can talk about it so got some new stuff on the way yeah, yeah yeah got some new stuff on the way maybe this is an opportunity to plug caleb a little bit on his own podcast i need it i know um I like Caleb's stuff a lot. Uh, I think Caleb emulates a lot of the the kind of music that I liked growing up. Um, and just overall a good sound. Some of them are pretty poetic, kind of bluegrassy, kind of old school outlaw country. Some of his new stuff, he teased it a little bit on, on his Fit page earlier. Shout out Caleb Lee Fit. Shout out. You might be cool enough to go see that, but if you're not a real fan, then mm. I don't know. But... Some of his new stuff's really, really good. A, l- a lot of my background comes, and I feel like I kind of have like a weird background compared to most people that that like country music. Um, my dad liked a lot of like um, alternative rock, and uh, I was kind of raised half and half between like Kentucky and Chicago. I spent a lot of time between between the two of them, and uh, spent a lot of time grew- growing up going to like the local country store and watching um, like bluegrass bands play. So I was always really interested by bluegrass music and I kind of got onto an alternative bluegrass phase like early 2012 to like 2014. Really loved the Punch Brothers. Probably one of the most mind blowing things to me like that someone could mix bluegrass music and classical music and kind of do that genre bending thing. So I like that, I like a lot of alternative music but um, I'd say I'm I'm pretty typical like Nashville wannabe cowboy hipster type deal where I like a lot of Sturgill Simpson, Tyler Childers, love Billy Strings, um, and there's just a bunch of other people in that space that are on the like Indigo playlist that I just love. I like Maggie Rogers, a lot of like cool independent people. Um, one of your friends, I like Vince Neil Emerson a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, well, Vince, he's my second favorite Vince Neil. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, there's some good ones, but uh, he puts out some really good music. Um, and I mean, there's just a lot of people in that space that kind of defy. I think one of the big things that is kind of common between a lot of people that affiliate themselves with country music, but like good music, is anyone who's kind of defying whatever pop country is putting out at the moment is usually good in my opinion i like real nitty-gritty stuff yeah i think like uh it's funny you bring that up i i recently went and filmed some stuff uh with the 615 house guys oh and they kind of asked me because i think just kind of based off how i speak almost yeah they were like so you like traditional country and like the, I think like the whole spectrum of country music is very interesting, because there's a lot of um, what some would call pop country, mm-hmm. and what many people who, of the five people that like my music, I'm sure like three of them probably would frown upon it. Mm-hmm. I like some pop country. Sometimes there's just a little yeah easy listening. Yeah, just like sometimes you need music at the lake. Yeah, I don't. I I have an issue when it's like the same thing over and over, but there's a lot of like pop country 
that I enjoy. And so maybe I'm just stuck in my ways, Caleb, but yeah. I feel like that for me is early 2000s country, 90s country. I can get along great on the lake Yeah, listening to some pot. I mean, I just, I'm not even going to be one of those guys that, that hates on like a country song with an 808 beat on it. You can, I can't. Uh, you, I love it. Yeah, I, I do not make my living in this industry, so I can be any type of critic I want. I don't like an 808 on a country song. If you're going to make something kind of new and call it something different, I'm cool with that. He's distancing himself as I'm he slowly should. Slowly backing away with my hands. Yeah, I mean, because that's what that that's what makes money. It's what's Please most palatable. Please sign me. Yeah, that's what's most palatable. But in in my opinion, I don't think a lot of people who are. Is that oh, me? Oh, I think that's you. We got a caller. Oh. Oh, this would be fun. No, no, yeah. keep it rolling. Yeah, yeah, we're going. Hey, Danny. Hey, how you doing? I'm good, man. You're live on my podcast. Well, not live. You're pre-recorded on my podcast. Say hi. Oh, hello, listeners. That's it. Well, we don't. We won't give it anymore. Um, I'm I'm realizing now I didn't respond to your text. That's okay. I uh I just I just want to love you. Yeah. And I just want to know when. Uh, I do as well. Let me. I'm a, I'm gonna assume it's like the same as last time for us. So let me check. Is it cool if I were to text it to you in like 10 minutes? Yeah, of course. I'll reach out because I just I want to make sure that nothing has changed from last time. Awesome. Okay, cool. Yeah, let, let me know as soon as you know. Awesome. Thank you so much, man. I'm sorry about that. No worries. Uh, enjoy the podcast. Thank uh, you so much. Casper Mattresses. That's our sponsor today. That's right. Casper Mattress. Lay down on this. <laughs> Thank you, Danny. Talk to you soon, buddy. Alright, peace. Damn. And we are back. You can no, you're first of all, bad self talk. Bad self talk. You are perfect. You very, are, very handsome, so strong, so big. You we need some loved. positive self talk. People like you. We need men for men out here. Boys support boys. Yes, boys support boys. Um I apologize my impromptu interruption. I think I think we keep the. It'd be cool if we could fade to black and uh, put him saying the Casper mattresses or something. Yeah, yeah. be funny. Is Cas- Casper's a real thing? Yeah. Didn't they go out of business? Was that like a fa- like a failed? Yeah. I mean, if Casper wants to sponsor Caleb, that would be great. I need a new bed too. So like, hit him up. Yeah. Um. But uh, we were just kind of talking the the pop country versus the alt country crowd. Yeah. I think. Um, the the consensus that we reached was pop country just pure radio country listeners you shouldn't be scared of reaching out and listening to some other other stuff some weird stuff some, yeah some fusiony stuff start with meta modern sounds and country music absolutely it's i'm going to go on record and say that's the best album without a doubt in the past 20 years maybe ever i think turtles all the way down is gonna go people don't know it yet but it's gonna go down as one of the best country songs of all time so the, the whole i i genuinely yeah. there's not a weak moment i can't even go like oh this one's a 10 but that's an eight yeah every it's, single song and, and so it's an it's an album if you're not aware for the listeners that are ignorant to this it is an album that is meant to be listened to all the way through and if you enjoy that Go back and look at the theory about his five albums. Mm-hmm. It's my—I mean, not Ooh. mind blowing, but it's very cohesive. Yeah, and listen to Sunday Valley. Oh man, the early, early stuff. Oh, it's really good. Um, but the consensus that we reached—if you're a pop country listener, don't be scared of the extra. But also, if you're an alt country enthusiast, yeah, don't be, don't don't dog on the kids. I might have. I'm going to take a second to redeem myself because I might have seemed like we're going to use another big word, pompous. Pompous. A little, a little uppity, right? I, I um, the Chicago side <laughs> was bleeding through. Absolutely. I, I personally like things a little bit more poetic and and a little bit with deeper meaning. But I also, you know, go out on the lake and have fun and need to listen to something that's not so heavy all the time. Yeah. So I'm someone that does listen to pop country sometimes. Yeah, I can't, I can't listen to Elephant while I'm fishing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But basically what I'm saying is that, you know, 
there's a time and place for everything and that you shouldn't hate on pop country just because it's pop country. The big thing I think where a lot of the contention comes from the alt country crowd is that sometimes it seems like pop country is a little uh, exclusive and tries to keep out the alt country crowd. And if it, if it wasn't for that, I feel like there wouldn't be an issue here. This wouldn't be a conversation. I think that that is true, but I also think there's a certain sense of like people, like some people just seek out non, non popular music. I think like if like they just want to be cooler than everyone else a little bit, but yeah, also yeah. like, it's not even like uh so lame as they just want to be cool. It's like they want to not go with the pack so yeah. much. Yeah. Um, I think I just like good music, and I think you can relate to that because we yeah. you're just playing some music for me. Maybe he'll put Luke some- Bryan, my favorite <laughs> Luke Bryan song. Because look, I I have nothing but positive things to say about Luke Bryan, and I mean that he has always been a sweetheart, uh, and I think he's very talented. I think he's excellent at what he does. I think he like owned popular country music for Without like a, a record amount of time. Without a doubt. If if not currently, I, like he's I grew the guy. up on his music and he's still relevant today, and that's a that's yeah. a feat. And truly, a sweetheart of a guy. I've yeah. heard horror stories about mega famous people. Every time someone who's less famous than Luke Bryan or Carrie Underwood, she's another one, mm-hmm. is rude to me. I'm like, I met Luke Bryan and Carrie Underwood, and they were sweethearts. Yeah. So you don't have a right. I've, I've heard that too. I've heard that Carrie Underwood is super sweet. But lighted up by Luke Bryan is what many people would consider like a pop country song yeah it's got a lot of like 808 drums yeah but that's a good song it's like a I, good I think that's it's I think pop that's country po- i think that's the point is that it's a good song yeah. and that people like good music it's catchy that, yeah that's the point like there's some good pop country yeah and not, the, not there's all of it's bad good. there's bad alt country the, yeah but the bad alt country is like trying to like, it's like almost like you could blame it on being ironic you know, yeah. or like, or that it's just, you know, a nobody. But when you have like a bad pop country song, it's like, okay, there was a bunch of money in producing this. You had a bunch of big names on this song and it still sucks. So is there alt country privilege? I well, I think that there's like, just independent. I think that there's, in, I think there's independent by your bootstrap privileges. Cause there are some songs super like they're good songs they're really good songs with low production value on the recordings on spotify and you could tell that if someone just gave that person a bunch of money to produce a song and a good team behind them Mm. that that would be like top 100 yeah man well i think that like because you know i listen to a lot of crazy stuff yeah same here and uh i one of my favorite bands remo drive and i think like a lot of other bands like in like the punk scene and then stuff like that like people fall in love with their first sound like Mm. their first record or their first project because it's more like minimal like there's records i love where the drums were recorded by like a mic hung over yeah and then their next record like they have some success and so they're able to properly do it and people aren't as into it because they're like well you know they sold out yeah it sounds good now i don't like that yeah i think so i don't i can't think of any specific examples that like where people really failed at that. I'm sure you could. Is that Reno Valley is like what you just said? Um, Remo Drive. Remo Drive. My yeah, bad. I mean, I, I'm not familiar. He's going to send me some of that later. Greatest Hits by Remo Drive is one of my favorite um, yeah. alternative records. Yeah. But also, but the, I think like them and um, well, like my, one, my probably one of my favorite bands ever, especially my favorite like alternative bands, Say Anything, mm. like their first they're like the their purest fans uh like don't listen to their new stuff yeah like it's yeah. the first album and they're they're not saying purest with an e but like the the purists yeah 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 they love the like high school albums that he made in his bedroom well, and that's like so that's a big that's a big thing in general right so i think no one likes my first few records <laughs> well i'm going to take this i'm going to take this to away from country for a second and, mm-hmm. and i think drake has a quote where he was talking about, you know, like, oh, you don't make music like you did anymore. And and basically his point was like, I'm sorry, I'm not going to make music that reminds you of college anymore. Like, I've got to change up my in order to stay relevant. An artist needs to change up their sound and they need to evolve just like everyone evolves personally. Like, I hope 
that anyone watching this, myself included, is not the same person they were a year or two ago. Mm -hmm. And it's the same way when you're looking at an artist and them developing their sound. It's the same as them developing their personality, in my opinion. So Yeah, I agree. I think like it's not on the it's not on the artist to give you what reminds you of a certain period of your life. You just have to enjoy that and realize that that something like that's finite and just enjoy it and and realize that you're not getting a bunch of that. Yeah. You know. I mean, but also you have that forever. Yeah, you, you, you can have that always song. go back and listen yeah. to that song or that album or whatever. It'll remind you of a certain point in your life, but like you can't expect an artist to like revert back to how they were two years ago mm. you know it's like the sturgill is a perfect example yeah when he released sound and fury mm. people were upset that and he that's, made that's this probably like, one of, that's probably i mean i like meta modern sounds but i like sound and fury a lot i love sound and fury it's my top it's in my top three but yeah. i think if i if civilization were to die and we could only leave one album to aliens for them to know what we made I would leave meta modern sounds and country yeah. music. Well, that would, that would be so they know to cut you open and pull out all your pain. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, through our minds. It's <laughs> there is a gateway. Yeah. Dude, I I saw <laughs> I, I I know there's artists who hate being compared to like the big big people. Yeah. Like I know there's ones that hate being compared to Tyler Childers or hate being compared to Josh Turner just cuz mm -hmm. they have a deep voice or whatever. When people compare me to Sturgill when people come up to me and say you have kind of a Sturgilly vibe, that's a huge Thank you, That's dude. a huge compliment. If I go down in history as a Sturgill ripoff, yeah. I was better than ninety nine percent of the population. You have a thing. Come so, on. So, so I'm gonna bring up some personal conversations here. You have oh, a God. thing about Tyler ripoffs. Yeah. <laughs> I have a thing with direct ripoffs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he, so I'll, I'll like, I'll like listen to a song. I'm like, man, this is really good. And I'll show it to Caleb. And he's like, that's this song by Tyler Childers. And I, I'm like, oh I my feel God. like I could, well, it's true. <laughs> it is true. Yeah. I'm not just, I never disagree with it. Cause you're always spot on, but I I'm made, like, I made a meme. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, I said like TikTok singers, this is bad for me to say, but I don't care. This is my couch. <laughs> and honestly, like no one's going to listen to this ever. I mean, maybe. Hey I'm guys. not exact. I'm not going to bring in a bunch of viewers. Like maybe my mom. I just, <laughs> I just think that the there are people. I get it. I get that. Like you want to sound like your influences. Like I just said, I agree that like there's some of my songs that are kind of sturgily, just mm -hmm. because like I love traditional country music infused and, with and he, like and he rock did, he tendencies. Did it, he did it first. I mean, like yeah. I mean, like it's hard. It's kind of like. The reason why you like an artist is because they're giving you exactly what you wanted, but you couldn't put together at the time. Uh, yeah, I think, I mean, with Sturgill, everybody, before Sturgill became legend status, they mm -hmm. said he was a Waylon ripoff. So, yeah. oh, he tries to sound like Waylon Jennings. Yeah, it's just, that's, it's, that's not a legitimate criticism. No, but, but I, yeah, I don't think any of it is. But I, there are people who quite literally try to do knockoff yeah. Morgan Wallen. Yeah, yeah. Every, a lot of not everybody. A lot of people right now are trying to sound like Morgan Wallen because well, he's the that's, hottest that's, thing. That's what's selling, and that you. It's okay. Like it's okay if you're not trying to go down in history as like yeah. some sort of like person who transforms. Revolutionary, yeah, revolutionary type crazy. idea. Not everyone can be a revolutionary, but you can still go get a paycheck. Like that's okay. Uh, yeah, dude. And Morgan Wallen is obviously very good at what he does. Yeah. Um. And then like talented and worth mm -hmm. worth people wanting to be like i just think i'm all for stealing from people i just think you have to steal from multiple sources yeah and you have to i mean you obviously have to make it on your own like i mean the argue that argument has always been really stupid to me and this is probably getting a little too intellectual but like no one has ever been so creative just to come up with something completely on their own it's always based off of something else you know if you didn't refer back to classical music or the way that people like organize notes and whatnot, you're, you're ripping someone off on some level at any point down the line, you yeah. know, whether it's the basics of music theory or it's, you know, ripping off the genre of country music who started country music, people in the mountains and the hills, right? Yeah. You're always ripping off someone you're taking what you grew up with and what you loved and transformed it into something that is your own. Yeah. So I think it's stupid. I think it's stupid when people try to tell, unless it's like a direct ripoff. Like that's, it, that's, it, that's my, yeah, yeah, that's my point. It's like 
you you can pull from different sources. Yeah. You can be like your idols. Mm-hmm. But I think you should also have some sense of wanting con- to contribute something different. Yeah. Otherwise, start a cover band. <laughs> I mean, and people do very well with that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like I'm there's a lot of like modern rock bands that I love. Like like I love the struts and a lot of people mm-hmm. say that they rip off Queen. So I mean, first of all, that's a great thing. Uh <laughs> but like I would argue that if they emulate Queen, they also emulate other rock bands. Yeah. They're pulling from a lot of sources. I think like and a big I think like a big one, and I'll, I'll give you this, is uh like Greta Van Fleet. Oh, <clears throat> excellent. A lot of people like rip off Greta Van like say rip Greta the Van Led Fleet. Zeppelin. Yeah, rip Led off. Zeppelin. But you know, people want to listen to that music. Yeah. And like there's no one making new Led Zeppelin songs at the moment. They're just playing the same stuff. Dude. So I won't name who it is in case it's too hot of a take and yeah. they don't want to own up to it. <laughs> but I was talking to someone recently who is pretty large in the um alt country scene. Okay. And we were talking about I'll use Midland. my imagination. We were talking about Midland. Oh. Because a lot of people refer to Midland as like, they're a fake band, they're not really country, they're playing dress up, they're making this music. And I was talking to this guy about it, I was like, man, I really love Midland. And like a lot of, that's a great example of like a lot of alt country people, like Midland is whatever. And he goes, dude, the reason that people hate on Midland is because everybody wanted to be in a band where they dress like that and make that music, and they just thought that you couldn't be successful doing it, and they're pissed that Midland is being successful doing it. I mean, I... I don't know. They're if not they're really mad that they're models and that they're no. handsome, and they're, they're, they're mad that looking, they're not they're doing looking. it. Yeah, I mean that that's that's a fair that's a fair thing to say. I think Caleb. that's why they hate Greta. Everybody hates Greta because they're like, well, you know, we we could have just been a Led Zeppelin cover band. You wouldn't be singing you, you to hundreds of thousands of people. You like didn't they do are. it. You didn't do it. Why and, didn't and, you? And so, and so there's another good one. I don't know if anyone likes that kind of music, but Goodbye June is also a really good. A really good kind of offshoot of that. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's just kind of like a, been a common trend these days. Whether it's country music or rock or whatever, you're looking at a lot of a lot of sounds coming back from previous eras, and that's a big thing right now. And I don't know if it's we've run out of new ideas. Which no, I, I I think like um, nostalgia is a big thing, and you I mean look at movies. Like how many yeah. times are they just redoing movies? Um, because you know people are people love it like nostalgia but, is but a big in better seller. ways i feel like there's better technology as far as producing goes you can just have like this really heavy classic rock album that would have never been able to be produced back back in the day yeah you know man if we'd had this conversation when i was in high school mm-hmm. i would have been the biggest like we hate pop country guy in the world yeah but i liked I, was was that was that an impersonation who so, was it? sounded a little bit like a country icon We'll roll it back. It wasn't Luke. This no, is Luke. That's Luke. This is Luke. Um, no, but like, man, I just, I anything that garners an audience mm-hmm. at the bare minimum, I respect it. Yeah. Because to someone, that music changed their life. Absolutely. They love it. It's what I, gets I them mean, out of bed in the morning. I don't, I don't, I'll never underestimate that, the ability. I mean, there's a very select few people who like the Punch Brothers, but there, there are like phosphorescent phosphorescent blues mm. that that gets me every time i'll start shedding tears it's to like that slot album. machine syndrome it'll it get you every time it'll get you every time mm. yeah can put it all on the line wow <laughs> it, it means something to someone and i i'm who am i to critique it you know like there mm. there, there are honest critiques you're singing flat you're out of you know you're out of time but dude that's like uh do you ever, do you ever see? Um, I'm, I'm not going to go against the family, but like, there's a popular Dave Grohl quote mm-hmm. where he's talking about singing shows, and he says, and he was basically saying like, um, it's not 100. percent There's a little nap. It's not 100. percent Like, just because there's, I believe that there are people who audition for American Idol, The Voice, mm-hmm. whatever, who are great artists who will never get a yes. Because yeah. based purely off conventional singing ability, they don't level match up or whatever. But that Dave Grohl once said something along the lines of like, "What if Bob Dylan auditioned? They would oh. they go on? Oh, you sing yeah. flat, you know, and you're like your timing's all over the place. There's like, I think people should just make whatever they like, 
and mm-hmm. garner an audience organically. Well, and that's that's kind of what I've always that's kind of what I've always thought is like I've I'm not a good dancer, I'm not a good singer, but I like to do both. You know, and, and I feel like most people should adopt that philosophy as well because there's going to be something people gather around things that they like, right? And so there might be you've got what? How many people on stage at America? Not stage. How many judges? Oh, three. You got three judges. You got three people with three different opinions that are judging you based on how you're singing. But I mean, you've got some weird alt country that yeah. that gets millions, millions of streams a month that that would never, never get a yes on American Idol. Yeah. With me personally, I think I think Lionel got it. Lionel's a, Lionel seems like a really cool dude to grab a beer with. I, just FYI, I haven't had the pr- the the privilege, but Lionel Richie is my favorite person in the world to speak to. Yeah, because he doesn't speak like a normal mortal. Okay, he doesn't go like, "How are you? It's nice to meet you, Lionel Richie." Yeah, he'll just walk up and tell you a legendary story. Yeah, <laughs> like you'll you'll go, "Oh my God, it's Lionel," and he'll walk up and go, "1973." <laughs> just start. Like, Michael Jackson wanted a cookie. Tito wouldn't give it to him. Stevie Wonder could see. Like he goes, he, that's that's his yeah. vibe, yeah, uh, which is beautiful. And uh, there's something kind of attractive about something just kind of weird like that, though, you know. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Where are we on time, Sam? Eleven minutes. Eleven minutes. We're fifty minutes in. Uh, this has felt effortless. Yeah. I feel like, you know, if we just monetize, and this has been surprisingly clean. I'll say mm. that, you know, mm-hmm. I feel like, mm. were you worried? Uh, not worried. You know, I just have a big mouth. Yeah, I do. Well, let me run some uh, current events by let's, you. Let's hear it. <laughs> this will be one of our last segments. Um, Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. Yeah. What do you think? So I should probably refrain from getting into too much detail, but I, I know personally that my dad loved the uh, Donnie or Johnny Depp. Depp trial and and you know it 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 is kind of relatable you know like if you've ever dealt with someone like who pooped in your bed I've personally never had someone poop in my bed I don't think I would let it ever get to that point Mm. um for any female listeners that are trying to come poop in Louis's bed yeah no if you're trying to emotionally manipulate me it's not going to work pooping in my bed is not the way to go but you know, I think that it's kind of relatable. I feel like that there's a lot of people that have interacted with people like that. Yeah. Um, and have never really felt like they have been seen. Mm. And they've never really felt like that they have received the justice from that situation that they deserved. Because a lot of those people that act like Amber Heard are really good at distorting reality. You know? Yeah. I mean, I think, first of all, I think it's weird how much of a pop culture thing this is. I didn't anticipate it being such I, a big deal. I, I get the critique. So I, I kind of know where you're going. I get the critiques where like there's so there's so much other shit going on in the world right now. And then you can get into conspiracy theory stuff like, oh, they're just trying to distract from this. And it's probably valid. I think the reason why it's so <clears throat> I got a little frog in my throat. I think the reason why it's so relevant is because people interact with people like that all the time yeah and they never come out in a way where they receive justice and it's a little i think it's relatable i think the they're both flawed for sure for sure um i don't know man i just have such a like mind your own business type outlook on it like i see the stuff and like obviously i i can feel how i feel about it like i wasn't there well, yeah, but so I don't know. as someone that's in, I love Johnny Depp. You're, you're in an industry where your image makes you money, right? And if someone were to falsely accuse you of something horrible that would keep you from making money, for sure, I would hope that you would sue them too. Yeah. Well, it, the tricky part with me would be I'd have to sue them for potential earnings lost, which right now <laughs> is pretty minimal. Yeah, I mean, they we probably do. I should date Amber Heard. <laughs> Sorry, Maddie. <laughs> Maddie, he didn't say that. We're cutting that in post. But I mean, it's one of those things where <laughs> I, I think it's relevant. I, I get the critiques where there's other stuff going on, but I think it's relevant. All right. Well, let's talk about something that actually matters. Okay. Let's hear it. 
And one of the fun things, because I thought to myself, what if I pull up news articles yeah. and I can get Louis' takes on it? Because how fun would that be for everybody? Oh, I feel like we're all hanging out just talking about stuff. But then I thought, if I really want to make it feel like we're all just sitting around, you, me, and the listener, yeah. I'm not going to research this. No. I'm going to tell you about something I kind of paid attention to. <laughs> and have no idea what's actually going on about. So I <laughs> saw that Travis Barker and Courtney Kardashian are on their like third wedding, but this one was like sponsored. Yeah. Have you heard about this? So I've uh, the only conversation I had about this was actually yesterday. Mm. It was actually yesterday. We had there was a slip and slide. Taylor, it was her birthday yesterday, so I'll shout out Taylor if she's watching this. But she better be. Yeah, she better be. I don't know who she is, I, but I'm, she better be. I'm gonna post it on my story. If you're not watching this, then we're gonna call you out. If I don't receive an Instagram DM, then I'm calling you out. Well, I had this conversation yesterday. And all I really know about it is that they had like three different weddings, mm. just like what you just told me. Yeah. And if you're making money, mm -hmm. if people are if people are dumb enough, and I'm I'm being very very frank here, if people are dumb enough to allow you to make money off of multiple weddings, they're not just spending like a stupid amount of money on weddings for no reason. Oh, it's an investment. It's an it's investment. An this it is an event. It's an investment. And she's also had like three other weddings before. It's not like it's something that's like, I'm Actually, sure she loves Travis, right? Has Courtney been married before? Yeah, I, I think know. so. I don't know if she, that might, I might get fact checked, but I'm pretty sure she has. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I mean, love the Kardashians, love Pete Davidson, love Kanye, love everyone. Yeah, I mean, that whole thing, whether, whether you're looking at it on like a surface level or not, that is probably. Kanye, Kanye got more attention than the Super Bowl. Mm. Like whether whether you take it at face value or you look at it as some like elaborate marketing scheme, Kanye got attention on the hardest day of the year and got more attention than than the biggest event of the year. That's a marketing genius right there. For sure. Are you of the opinion that most of what he does is performative? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. There's do you, a lot. Do you think he's really just a crazy genius, or do you think he is a crazy genius in that some of it is a little bit more uh, pre thought I, out than we think? I have no idea. I think we could sit here and talk about motivation all day long, but look at the results is what I'm saying. Well, oh, uh, thank you, Jamie. Jamie, if you could pull that up. Uh, Courtney has been married once. Do we know to whom? Once before Travis Barker. To to Travis Barker. Yeah. Oh, that's his only, her, her only, only husband. husband. Yeah. Wow. I thought she got married to. Doesn't she have a child? I think they were married, but Scott never. Got married. Oh. oh, that's a thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. They never got married. I always think he's Jared Leto. <laughs> they look similar. He looks like blonde Jared Leto to me. That's. I mean, yeah, he's the. What is he? The king of something? What's the? Did you know that Jared Leto like has a cult? It doesn't surprise me. He like has a festival. I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't. I mean, there's, this is what actual conversation is. We're not. Yeah. We're, I mean, we're talking about. I mean, this is another weird one. We're talking about method actors. Yeah. Jared Leto is like. I he mean, sent rats and stuff when he was yeah. on the Suicide Squad. Yeah. I mean, and, and for what? Like five minutes in Suicide Squad? <laughs> well, folks. Sorry, Jared. <laughs> now that Kanye and Jared Leto will never be on my podcast. I think we're going to wrap it up. <laughs> Guys, I sure hope you've been enjoying these episodes of the Green Couch Podcast. Um, I've enjoyed doing them. It's fun. It makes me feel like I have a purpose in the world. Uh, we haven't uploaded any of these yet if you're watching this. So to my five weekly viewers, I just want to say thanks. I'm wondering, we're going to keep this up as long as it goes. Um, I've really enjoyed today, Louie. It's fun. Thanks for coming on. No problem. I really enjoyed getting to talk to my friend. I think we get to do this all the time, and it's fun to, to let everyone in. To let everyone in. So if you guys like this, if you like just more of a casual conversation yeah. piece, less of an interview with a, a person who matters yeah. type of thing, comment down below. Yeah. Um, be if sure would, to like. If you'd like to see, like, uh, you know, maybe not a mom-friendly version of this, I can definitely upload it to my OnlyFans. OnlyFans.com yeah. slash Charlie. Uh, Sweet Charlie. Sweet Charlie the third. <laughs> <laughs> guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Louie, for being here. Be sure to like, subscribe, check Tom. us out on all the things. 
I am Caleb Lee Hutchinson. And I am Louis Charles Waddle III. At Caleb Lee Music on social platforms. At Louis Waddle. And we love you. See you next time. Joe Rogan Experience out. <laughs>